Hey guys, this is a quick manual for your brand new MacBook Pro. This video will actually be for beginners. So if you're brand new into Mac, this would be the video for you. So let me just start off with this button up here. On the top right hand corner, you're gonna see this button. That is your fingerprint, and you did notice that as you were setting it up, but that's also a button. So I do wanna note that this is a button. You can hold it down to shut down your Mac, force shut down your Mac. Other than that, you wanna go into the Apple logo and shut it down from there. So just so you know, again, on the top left-hand corner of your screen, you're gonna see the Apple logo. Then from here, you're gonna see shut down. And that's how you turn off your MacBook Pro. So you just choose shut down. You're gonna see this warning here that you're about to shut it down. Press shut down again, and it's just gonna turn off and you're done. To turn on your MacBook in the other hand, all you have to do is just open this up. And if it doesn't turn on right away, you can always press the power key which is right here. So that's not just your fingerprint, that is a power key and you can press that. Now, how do you know this turned on? Well, you should see an Apple logo and after the Apple logo, you should see this. Obviously, if you don't have battery, it's not gonna turn on. Make sure to charge it up. Once you log in, you should be able to log in just fine with your credentials and just get started. I also wanna note, if you're brand new to this, well, you're gonna notice that you don't have a regular USB port on your Mac. You're gonna have these ports here and the other side, you're gonna have similar ports anyways. So these ports right here are USB-C. So what you need to buy is an adapter for regular USB. So if you wanna plug in anything like a USB stick, this is the adapter. So see this connection right here, it's USB-C. You would plug that into your Mac, and then this is regular USB. So it's best to get something like this, that's a hub, so you can connect various things to it, and something lightweight or so. Now there's better hubs than this one, of course, that have their own power. Those are actually better, but these other ones are just more portable. So this is something that you definitely will want for later on. All right, so first things first, you're gonna go into your system preferences. That's down here. So this is system settings. If you don't see that on the bottom, which you will, you're also gonna see it on the top left-hand side of your screen, Apple logo, go into system settings. And then from here, just scroll down. You're gonna see almost all the way in the bottom trackpad. So your trackpad, we don't want to be clicking on our trackpad and that's because it does wear it out. You can just tap on it just like you tap on your phone or your iPad. So see this option down here below where it says tap to click, just turn that on. Now something else I'm also gonna do and you might want to, you might not, it's up to you. So at this point, instead of having to actually go on and click on your trackpad, you can tap on it in order to do anything. So let's say I wanna close this up, I can just tap on it. To go back to it, my system settings are down here, so I can open that up. And I'm just gonna type up here trackpad because I can find my settings that way even faster. And something that I personally like, this is not for everybody, but you can test it out. You can put your tracking speed high. So I'm gonna put it up too fast, that way I can move around way faster. So that's the tracking speed that I personally like. You don't have to. And my click at medium, I actually like that. So I'm gonna leave it as is. Now your secondary click is your right click. So Max do have right clicking. And especially right now that we turned on tap to click, you can just use two fingers on your trackpad, just tap on it, and you're gonna see this. You're gonna get options. So that's your right clicking. Now here's something else that's optional, but some of you may want. So again, we're just gonna type in zoom this time on the top left hand side. And this is something that's actually gonna help me make this video right now. So click on your first option which says zoom accessibility. And then your third option is something I like to personally use. So this is to zoom in on things. So right now on my trackpad, if I press my control, so that's this key, it's showing you here, control on your keyboard. So that's on the bottom left hand side of your keyboard, you press control. And then with two fingers on your trackpad, you can just move them in and out. You're gonna be zooming in on things. This is something useful even if you don't make videos. Sometimes you wanna zoom in on things and you can zoom in anything. It doesn't have to be like a website or something like that because on a website you just press command plus or minus in order to make it bigger. But this time you can just zoom in on things, which is nice to have. And I personally like to do it that way, using the control key. And again, you're just using two fingers on your trackpad and you're just making the gesture of going up and down on your trackpad. So that would be it for zooming. Let's just close that. Now the next thing that you wanna look at, if you scroll down, you will notice it says desktop and dock. 
Again, if you don't see it right away, just search for it. So right here, so you have more space on your screen, you may want your dock to disappear sometimes and just appear once you go down to it. Plus it's kind of nice for it to magnify a little bit. So I wanna show you what I mean by this. So let me just zoom out so you guys can see everything that's going on. And we're gonna mess around with the magnification. So we're gonna make it and turn it on. It's right now off. We're gonna turn it on to like medium. So if I go down here, you're gonna notice that things have been magnified a little bit. Let me just make it large so you guys can actually see what this means. So this means if I scroll over them, they're gonna magnify so I can see what I'm gonna choose. That's something nice that's built into Mac. And I'm not sure why they don't make it a standard. But here you go. I'm gonna set it up just around there. I do like that, maybe a little bit larger. So again, I'm messing around with magnification. I'm just moving this. Okay, so my trackpad, all I'm doing is just pressing down with my thumb and then I'm just moving this around with my finger. So that's my trackpad. So you can also mess around with the size of your dock. You can just move this around. But for now, we're just gonna leave it. Uh, the position, I like it to be on the bottom. You guys can change it to be anywhere. Well, almost anywhere. And here it is. This is what I like to do. Automatically hide. Just turn that on. I'm gonna zoom out so you guys can see. See, it's gone. There's no more dock. To get it back, all you have to do is just scroll over it. So that means you go down here. So again, all I'm doing is going down my screen with my mouse and then it appears. As soon as I go up, it disappears. If I go down, it appears again. So that's the best way to get the entire screen. And anytime you need an app and you need to open something up, all you have to do is go down with your mouse and it's just gonna appear. And that's also why I like to have this magnify as well. So that's how you can get the most out of your screen. Now I know I'm going to details kinda right away, but these are things that even experienced Mac users miss out on. But anyways, let's just go back into system settings. I'm gonna show you one more thing. Now something else I wanna show you is this. So let's just go back into system settings and then just look for gestures, same thing, or trackpad, click on that option, whichever, it doesn't really matter. And then from here, just choose your third option. It says more gestures. I want you guys to just go over these and take a look at them. And app expose, just turn it on. Trust me, it's gonna be more useful. I would use three fingers instead of four. You can always change it to four. Just try them all out and see which one you like more, three or four, but here we go. And if you just scroll over it, it kind of gives you a preview of what this is. And that's all. You don't have to click on your trackpad. You just place your three fingers and then just go down. So let me just zoom out. And if I go down, it's gonna show me all the apps that I have open at the moment. It's just settings at the moment, so that's why it's only showing me this. I can click on it, and here we go. But if you scroll up, in the other hand, if you go up, it's gonna show you other options. And I want you to go over and just scroll over each one of these, just so they show you what you can do, because the more gestures that you use, the more fun you're gonna have with this. So just scroll over them, and you're gonna see what each one means. The pinching one, something that I used a lot, and show desktop, I also use a lot as well. So for example, this one, what it means is basically that you just place technically your entire hand on your trackpad and then from the center, you just open up your hand on your trackpad. And you're gonna see that when I do that, it just gets rid of that window. And then to get that back, all I have to do is just close my hand. So just put it on your trackpad in opening position and then just close it up. You're gonna get that back. What I just said to do is basically the same thing that you're doing right now, just by opening you would just close so you do it the reverse that what this is telling you in order to get that window back but just try out all the gestures that you can because it will make your workflow a lot faster but anyways let's just go to the next thing under your search just type in so this is in system settings by the way we're still in there we're gonna go on and search for hot corners so this under accessibility just tap on it hot corners your second option I'm gonna zoom out so you guys can see a little bit better what I'm doing, and here we go. You don't need to set these up, but I'm gonna give you those options as well, because Mac can do so much. Now, these hard corners are very useful depending on your workflow, so you can test some of these out. So right now, I'm gonna show you something about your battery. So on the top right hand corner of your screen, you're gonna see your battery. That's beside your Wi-Fi. Just tap on it, and you're gonna go into battery settings. Under your battery settings, you see this, low power mode. You can set this up, be always on only on battery or only on power adapter 
power adapter it wouldn't make sense but you could set that up sure but if you guys have an iphone or ipad it kind of works the same way low power mode so you might want to put this on when you're on battery so that way you know that your battery is just going to last a little bit longer than when low power mode is off so i'd never so this is something to consider turning on especially if you're on the road a lot other than that those are the tips that even experienced users do not know However, let's move on to the real basics. So down here, you're going to see Finder. So let's just open up Finder. Once we open it up, you're going to see this. Let me just expand it out a little bit more. You're going to see your favorites. You can add stuff to your favorites, by the way. You can view more stuff there. But before I keep going with anything else, your view, how you view things. Let me just go into my documents, which is this option here. And in your documents, you don't need to view them like that. You can view them like this. So if I change it to show items like so, it's going to show like this, which is better for me. I'm more of a visual person, so I don't want to view it this small. Although for some people, they like it because you can see the size, you can see a lot of information about it. And here, you're just going to view it like that. However, for me personally, this looks a lot better. But up here, you can try out a few other views as well. But anyways, Finder is where you would go for almost anything. Your documents, everything that you want to drop. If you want to find your downloads folder, almost anything here for inside your Mac, you would go here. So any folders, that means. So right now we're downloading Finder. Just go into settings. In your settings, you're going to see tags. And you're also going to see sidebar. So this is your sidebar in your Finder. Most of you may want to view your movies there. Music, you can put a check mark there, pictures, or your home folder. This is the big one. A lot of people are missing this, and this is actually really important to have. Don't know why it's not default, but you should turn that on. I'm going to show you what that means. Also, you can go into locations and turn this on, but I wouldn't for that. I'll just get a little confusing. So we're just going to close this up at this point. And what we just did was add this into our favorites. So we can see that in our sidebar. So if I click on it. I can see everything that's in my Mac. So I can go into my desktop documents, downloads, movies, music, pictures, public. So all my main folders are right here. So that's my home. And just in case, if you want to move these things around, so if I want this to be up here, all I have to do is click on it and then drag it to what position I want. So I can leave it here. I can make it go in the middle. I can move it here. But again, all I'm doing is just clicking on it and then just dragging it to wherever I want. So that's how you guys can move that around as well and reorganize it. So that's a really good introduction to Finder. Now let's move down here. You're going to see Safari. So this is your web browser. From here, you can just type in google.com, for example. And here you go. You can go on and search for anything you want. You can even download Google Chrome if that's something that you like. But I would re recommend just using Safari. Now, in order to fully close any applications, you never want to just tap here on the red. I know that you might think you're closing it, but it's actually running the background if you just do that, pretty much minimizing it. So what you want to do is press Command Q on your keyboard in order to fully close this, or you can go into the app settings right here. It's not really the settings, but the options and just put in quit Safari. But that's usually too much of a hassle, so just press command Q, just like it shows you here as well. So to fully close any program for that matter, again, just press command Q and it's fully closed. Now remember that this video is for beginners, but also some really good tips for advanced users. Anyways, let's just move on down here below. You're going to see your dock. Now under your dock, you might not want all this stuff here because uh, you will not be using half of this. I'm just going to go through some of the basics down here and just show you what each one is. So down here below, you're going to see any apps that you have opened recently. You're also going to see your downloads here. Most likely you're going to see your system settings that we went over already. App Store, that's where you're going to download stuff. We're going to go over that in a second. Pages, this is the comparable to Microsoft Word. This would be like Excel. This would be like PowerPoint right here. You news. just tap on it and check it out what it is. But this is where you read the news. It's just an app. Music, this is where you can download music and play music as well. Apple TV, this is the app. So it's different than Apple TV Plus, which is a channel. On the Apple TV app, you can explore many, many channels. 
and see which one you like. And this is also where you guys can purchase movies and keep them in your account. Freeform, we were gonna go over later on. Notes, again, just keep notes there. Reminders, you can set up any reminders, contacts. You have your calendar there, FaceTime. This is if you wanna make any FaceTime calls. If you have an iPhone or iPad, you've done those before. But if you haven't, this will just be using your email in order to make any FaceTime calls to anybody that you would like. Uh, it would be using your camera from your computer, by the way. Photos, this is where you're gonna import and export any pictures onto your Mac. You can also keep your pictures in documents folder, for example, but most people are using photos now because it has improved so much. Now your maps is kind of like Google Maps. However, these are made by Apple. Your mail, you can set this up just by adding any email. So you can add your Hotmail, your Gmail, you can add multiple into just this one app. So you can, you can just go on and take a look at everything all in just one app. Messages, same deal. If you don't have an iPhone, for example, you wouldn't have iMessage before and you wouldn't be getting any text messages in here. Again, if you don't have an iPhone, if you have an iPhone, you could get text messages here, but iMessage is different. That's why this is called messages because you can be getting both and iMessage is just digital. So you can use that in order to send messages to other people that have Apple products, not just the Mac. They could have an iPhone, iPad. You could do that without having an iPhone. But again, if you have an iPhone, this would be the exact same app that you have on your phone. Safari, like I said, that's your web browser. Launchpad, this is something that you might not even want to have here, but it could be useful. It's just to view all your applications that you have in your Mac. Quick look at them. So now that we went over your dock right here, you're gonna want to know how to take these out. So we're gonna delete these from here. We're not gonna delete the actual apps. We're just gonna take them out from the dock because your dock might get too much stuff in there that you're not gonna use. Because anything that you have down here, it's just for your quick access. Because at the end of the day, to access any of these, you can just go into Finder, and under Finder, you can just go into Applications, which is your third option, and you're gonna see all your apps. So even apps that are not in there. So again, any programs that you don't see on your dock down here below would be under your Applications folder. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. And for example, Contacts, I don't need quick access to this. All you have to do in order to get this out of here is drag it out. So click on it and drag it out into your desktop. It's gonna say remove, let go of it, and it's gone. Did you just delete that app? No, it's just out of here. So it's not in your way. Same thing I'm gonna do with calendar. I'm gonna do the same thing with Freeform, for example. Apple TV, I don't need quick access to that. I don't need quick access to this. I don't need quick access to this don't need quick access to this. There's a lot of stuff that I don't need quick access to and it's gonna make everything look so much cleaner and so much better. Same thing with maps, I don't need quick access to that. Everything else I kinda do need quick access to because I do check them out a lot. FaceTime, I don't need quick access, barely use that. And there you go. If you would like to add anything in here on the other hand, all you have to do, for example, is go into Finder. Once we're in Finder, just tap on your third option. It's gonna say Applications, and I can drag any application into there to have quick access to it. So for example, if I want quick access to my time machine, I can just drag that over down here, just place it anywhere, and there we go. I have quick access to that, or I can bring anything that was there before, such as FaceTime. I wanna move that back in here. I can move it back just by dragging it into this space. So that's how you guys can add anything into your dock or take it away. Anyways, right now I'm gonna take those away. But before I keep going, I do wanna highlight that Time Machine is something that's in under system settings. And Time Machine is something that you wanna set up if you have an external hard drive. So if you wanna keep a backup of your Mac, make sure to set up Time Machine. It's really good, it's pre-built into every single Mac and it helps you transfer stuff from one Mac to another if you want to upgrade later on. Plus it's a great backup. I do have a separate video that shows you everything about Time Machine and how to set that up. So make sure to check that out. Now, something else that you're gonna to want to know is how to create folders and so on. So technically, in order to keep everything clean, you wanna open up Safari and create folders in there. So whether that's in the, your documents or downloads or anywhere else, all you guys have to do is right click and you can create a folder. And there you go. You can title it anything you want. Click anywhere out, just press enter, whichever. I can create another folder. I can just leave it as in as is just by pressing enter. Just gonna leave it. Just click out of it. And there you go. To rename a folder at any point in time, all I have to do is just click on it. 
press return key right here on your keyboard and then just use your arrows you can go back and forth on it and then just change the name to whatever you like so i'm gonna delete this just pressing delete on my keyboard and i can just put tech and design for example youtube channel click out of it and there you go just change the name to delete anything so if you want to delete any folders or any documents movies pictures anything really from your mac all you have to do is just click on it then you're gonna press command delete that's on your keyboard and it's been deleted after you delete it it does go down to your trash bin down here below just right click on your trash bin and empty it out that's the quickest way to fully delete it you're gonna see this and then from here just press on empty trash so you're done now let's say you're having problems deleting anything well just make sure your admin user which you are most likely and in this case we're gonna right click here we're gonna go into get info and then under get info you're gonna see down here below it's gonna say sharing and permission just open that up you're gonna see if you have permission to read and write just make sure you have permission to read and write you can unlock this obviously with using your password but for most of you you're good to go you can change all of this to read and write read and write because if you couldn't delete it most likely it was just on read only so maybe that was getting your way you can just put read and write close this up and then you can just delete it in order to delete this another way would be to right click on it if you right click on it you can just select your second option where it says move to trash and there you go and then just empty it from your trash like i said now to empty it from your trash bin there's another way you can double click on this to open it up so just tap on it once and then you're going to see the option to empty it out right here on the top right hand corner you're going to get this option as well and you're done so that's how you can delete any files right here on your mac if you want to delete any programs then you could do it the exact same way or download an app that's called app delete that's what i use but you don't need it you can just delete it from here just like i deleted all those folders if you're downloading an app right here that's not from the app store on your mac all you have to do for example i'm downloading this one right now obviously click on allow it's going to go directly to your downloads folder and in this case it's right here so let me just go on and open it up just by clicking on it it's going to say open yep yeah. and then you're going to see this installation just follow the installation right through install and it's going to download it it's basically going to download the app and move it into your applications folder and that's how you do this so right now just by following that it's already installed with a dmg file it's going to be pretty much the same thing and i can check out any applications just by going to finder i'm going to open that up then under favorites the third option will say applications right here you're going to see your apps which includes the one that i just installed right now so at this point you have all your basics for your mac but you want to highlight one more thing if you click on the top where it says your time or date you're going to see all of this so you're going to get any notifications you're also gonna get a lot of information that you may want, may not want. These are your widgets. And I'm not gonna show you too much into this. There's other videos that go really deep into widgets, but I just wanna highlight that you can edit these. You can, you can have less or more, but from what I've seen, not that many people even use these widgets. To get them out of the way, just click on your desktop anywhere and they're gonna go away. As well as if you want quick access to any of your main settings, on the top right hand corner again just click here on this option so you're going to see that you've got wi-fi bluetooth airdrop these are your main things your display if you want it brighter less bright you want your audio to go up or down you can always mess around with these on your keyboard yes but if you don't want to you can mess around with them here focus is also good so you're not bothered with notifications all over the place so you can check that out and obviously we have music down here because a lot of people listen to music while they work get out of this just click away anywhere on your desktop and last but not least let's set up your email so down here below you're gonna see mail just tap on it you're gonna see this if it's setting up for the first time then it's gonna show you your inbox this will only be for your iCloud email however you can set up any email in here in this app so you can add your Gmail Hotmail any email that you want you can add it on here and in order to do that you just go on the top left hand side of your screen gonna see mail just tap on mail and here you're gonna see this accounts and settings what you want to do is going to add account which is your third option well technically fourth option down here below 
you're just going to add your account and from there you're going to see all these options so like i mentioned before it depends what type of email you've got if your email doesn't match any of these just go into other mail account but just to show you an example i'm going to add in a gmail account so that means it's a google account press continue and then from here just type in your email it's going to ask you for your password and then just go next 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 and you've added everything onto it so like i said you would just press next and yes if you got any security in your gmail most likely you got a notification on your phone or your tablet you just have to open up that youtube app and you would just verify there if you're doing this with google now you can also add your gmail into your contacts so you're just adding your contacts into here this app calendar you can sync up your notes you can sync up anything from google really and I suggest just click on everything. You don't have to. This is just for mail. But anyways, let's just tap on done. And at this point on your left hand side, you should see after just a little bit, just wait for it. It's going to load up everything for you. And everything does keep loading for me right now. It's refreshing. I'm going to see Google. So that's my other mail account. So on the top of your mail, you're going to see all these options. You're going to see all inboxes. You're going to see your iCloud or Google. So you can tap on each one of them or just tap on all inboxes. You're going to get everything all in one so you can view all of them. And you can keep adding more and more emails that you have from other servers such as Hotmail, for example, into this one app. So that's it for your mail account. I'm just going to close this up for now. And like I mentioned before, you can download apps, programs from Safari. So because not all of them are in the App Store. But if you do want to download something from the App Store, this is how you do it. So just open up your App Store. And from here, we're just going to continue on and I'm going to give you an example. So you can enable notifications or not with the App Store. What I would do is just not, I just get way too many notifications. And then from here, you're just going to search for the app that you want. So we're just going to search for Final Cut Pro, for example. And let's say I didn't buy Final Cut Pro yet. Then what I would see on that specific app would be a price. Obviously, it's not $2.99. This is just another app. But this is just to give you an example. Right now, since I bought this before, I'm going to see this. So all I have to do is just download it. And there we go. I'm downloading the very first app into this Mac. Now, if I want to download any other apps, such as, let's say, Compressor, I can just search up for it. Again, something I bought before. I'm going to go on and download it. I do want to mention that there's a bunch of free apps right here on your app store. But as soon as the app gets downloaded, you're going to see this open. You can also find any apps that you may have downloaded in Finder. Once you open up Finder, you're going to see applications. Click on that. And then you're going to see the apps here. So you can see Final Cut Pro is still downloading. However, Compressor fully downloaded. So it's right here. And that's how to find any apps that you have downloaded into your Mac and are fully installed. As soon as they download, they pretty much install by themselves. That's if you're downloading them from the App Store. However, if you're downloading them from Safari for a specific website, then that's a little bit different because it's going to give you a DMG file. Just click on it. Just follow. Just click next, 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 basically. And what usually happens during this process is that whichever app you download, it's going to be added into your applications folder. It just moves it onto there. And that's it. That's how you guys can do that. So that's how to download apps right here on your Mac. Other than that, that's it. I showed you all the basics that you need to know for your Mac just to get you started. If you want more specifics, I do have a ton of more videos with tutorials, but that would be it for this one. Go on and have fun with your Mac. If you have any questions, comments, you guys can write down here in the comments area. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Thank you.